Zelda in Fote Podcast. Bum, 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 bum. Hey everybody, welcome to the Zelda Informer Podcast. My name is Adam. Thank you so much for joining us on our anniversary episode. Adam, oh uh, yeah! Video I was games! Do, I, was gonna put, I was gonna put in a sound effect, but I guess you guys oh, took care of that. So oh, that's like thing. Air, no, that's easy for horns. me. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Uh, we have we have some wonderful people on this week. We've got some cool topics. We've got a lot of time to spare. We're gonna talk about some things. But before we get all to, to all that, here's the news rundown from this past week. Plenty of news on Hyrule Warriors Legends and Triforce Heroes. The Pokemon Company announced a new way to penny and dime its loyal fans. Plague of Shadows gets a release date, and Sony is offering some amazing deals for the PlayStation 20th anniversary. Once again, my name is Adam. That opening theme song is brought to you by Brandon and Company, our wonderful people over across the internet ways. And this week's closing theme is once again Hero of Time Remix by Jish. Thank you for joining us. This week I am joined by... Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Colin, the dude with the food. <laughs> that that was that was pretty great, guy. That was pretty great, Colin. You betcha. Hey, what's going on? It's happy anniversary, Chris here with the, all the, the anniversaries and the happies and the chocolate and the big teddy bears. <laughs> I'm not me. happy or a big teddy bear, so I feel like that I've been lied to. But our next guy is it's. I am Jake <laughs> and. I don't I don't know how how familiar the audience is with this information but this will be my my final episode I'm afraid. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh, Jake man. Jake came oh, into man. Jake came into the office one morning and he got an escape board and he was like whatever. And I was like, "Jake, you <laughs> can't I, I I I floofed my hair and I told him he's too establishment for me." And, and then he put on his sunglasses and he, my, he broke out the window and did a kickflip with my with my sideways hat and 90 sunglasses <laughs> with a boombox on my shoulder. <laughs> and I and then playing Nirvana or sunglasses. He, 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 he <laughs> gave me a kiss. He's like, "You stay well, kid." A lot, of, a lot left. seemed to have happened within like five seconds. Jake jumped out of a window <laughs> while carrying a boombox on a skateboard, wearing sunglasses, playing Nirvana, kissing Chris on the cheek, said a, a few kind words to him, and also scoffed at me. So. It is the only way to appropriately uh, take care of something like that. <laughs> yeah. compared, compared to freaking Caleb, who just like later. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Actually, we got an email from one of our fans, I guess the first fan topic. Uh, Dear Adam, I miss Caleb. I miss his deep, sultry, ever-disappointed voice. It makes me blush. Please, can you get him to come back on? Thanks. Sincerely, Austin. Thank you, Austin. But Caleb has also said, Psh, whatever. Uh, sadly, he is no longer a part of the podcast. Uh, we have parted ways. Don't worry. We don't hate each other. We're not, we're not like, it wasn't like a, a bad breakup or anything. Uh, yeah, same we're thing best with friends. friends. Same thing we're with all Jake. Game Grump, circa 2013. Yeah, we're not, we're not, we're not. Uh, <laughs> we are... We are on good terms. I still, I still am planning on hanging out with Jake, often seeing Caleb everyone, when he is around because he lives far away. Not uh, to mention, everyone has some pretty great content planned. Yes, so. yes. Uh, we're sure. just we're busy with different things. Uh, Jake and Caleb, you guys want to just you know go your own way, and you know it's probably fine, dude. <laughs> you just yeah. yeah. Uh, speaking of uh, own ways, I I can't definitively say and i know this is this is a little like post episode stuff but i guess it's good to get it all out now i don't know definitively what the future holds but i can tell you that i am halfway through my first ever video what oh what? nice what? oh I no am, that's what? crazy so if you want to find out when i when i do that you can follow me on are you guys ready for this are you guys oh, ready i've never done this before i'm ready oh oh man you guys can follow me on twitter I forgot my Twitter name, so I'll tell Isn't Adam it, later. It'll be Ask down me, below. Jake. It'll be, it'll you know be Jake's Twitter. I made a Twitter in 2011, like when I was a senior in high school, it's and like I never Jake used Crossroad. it. And then I saw, like, three years later, it got hacked by some Russian guy. <laughs> so you guys can look forward to seeing all of my tweets from 20, 2012 that are all in Russian. So <laughs> It's just a wall. I don't know who I'm following, who's following me, but, man... I, I was I it's some it's pretty interesting in stuff that's all in Russian. I found out because like I got email updates from Twitter and I usually never check my you know my spam email or whatever and all my like uh emails from Twitter were in Russian. So <laughs> I was like, oh dear. You think this person would be smart enough to change the emails? What's, what's going on, guys? <laughs> and so I go in and sure enough. But yeah, if you want to see some Russian tweets, follow me on Twitter, I guess. Uh, well I guess for now they're Russian. And then later yeah, for now, later. I mean, I'll start posting English, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, maybe. Japanese. It's undecided. He's 
Uh, he's he's still I've gotten he, a little used to it. I, I don't know. Far C is today. is in the future possibly. <laughs> All right. If anything, just send Jake your uh, your letters and your you know your yeah. manuscripts and such. And anyway, he'll take a look at his study. Uh, yeah, but that's that's the news. Follow them on Twitter. Follow them past the podcast because uh, they're both of you guys are wonderful, and it was so nice to have you guys with us. It was so nice to be able to chat joy, with you man. in this setting and you guys uh, are my spend best more time with you. I'll get very sappy about about the podcast towards the end. But yeah, we're we have a, this we have is a full our, episode. This, yeah, this is our this is our anniversary episode. So it's it's pretty much a year, it's a year in review. Post Adam. Oh man, this is the last time I get to do this. Hey, Post Adam, put put in um some some 1950s post grunge covered by an 80s band. 1950s post? and also an air horn. What? Oh, what does I'll, that even mean? I'll do my best. <laughs> if you Thanks, find man. me something, <laughs> maybe. I, I really appreciate it. I will do my he's best. Not, he's just, not finding anything for just you. Just hit your keyboard and put it into SoundCloud and it'll just come up. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, so what have you guys been playing recently? Metal Gear, uh, Metal Gear... Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Metal Gear... <laughs> Sonic 3 and Knuckles. <laughs> and... Uh, Metal Gear. Wonderful. Oh. I want to say, I honestly have not played a game this last week just because I've been working a lot on a lot of different things. However, I was watching video game footage. I did watch a Let's Play or two of the Japanese version of um, the 3DS port of Dragon Quest VIII. And oh. it made me very jealous that they have it out now. So I'm hoping they make a localized version for next year. They us. won't. Uh, so don't say that. <laughs> it's you all think ours. They, you, you can't think they have care? It. <laughs> you think they want us to have fun? I mean, I don't know. I really hope so. But as soon as I'm done with this project I'm working on, then I'm going to get back to yeah. Metal Gear and get yeah. past my like my 5% done. I've also been playing Metal Gear. <laughs> Sonic 3 and Knuckles is a ruse. I've been playing a lot of Metal Gear. I wish I was like, playing Sonic 3 and Knuckles. It's do gotten you, to the point... Adam, do you really? I, this is a better game than listen, Metal Gear 1! It's listen, gotten I, to the uh, point where when I'm not playing Metal Gear Solid <laughs> Five, um, and I'm, I'm not just leaving home, it on so I can develop stuff. No, I'm I'm on my 3DS <laughs> replaying Snake Eater. Like it's just you're just surrounded. I need by my Kojima. fill. You know what I'm saying? I need my fill. Not, still on a train. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna play Peace Walker on the PSP. I'd Hideo rather win, break Hideo my hands. Out. Why don't just you get the HD Metal version of Peace Walker? I do own the HD version of Peace Walker. Then don't play it on the PSP. You play it. On I know, yeah, but I can't. Those rare times where I'm like, yeah, dude, play the remake. It's way better. <laughs> I can't just like pick up my PS3 and play it at Applebee's. Okay, I gotta. Oh uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's do the, the transferring. Don't you really like the Vita? It's a. It's... Uh, excuse <laughs> you. <laughs> Listen, if I uh, wanted man. to play with a corpse, I wouldn't. I still, Wait. I still have Ground I Zeroes. I haven't played it yet. I, I still have okay. Played. I was about to ask, what, are you, what have you been playing this week? I have been playing Nets the Republic 2, The Sith Lords, because I finally had money to get uh, a $10 game on That's Steam. That's a lie, Adam. You've Either. been playing Shelf Builder 2015. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I, I did a lot of... I felt pretty proud of myself. I did a very unnerdy thing for once. You've been playing shit. Tonka Construction on PC. <laughs> I actually had a question about your your the way you arranged your, you know, your happy home designer house, Adam, your room. <laughs> Uh, why did you put like the shelf areas, like to put things in towards the bed instead of towards your well, desk? Well, I'm using the back. Interesting design choice, actually. I'm actually using yeah. the the shelf, like the backside, as a uh, place to put like uh, soundproof padding to make the podcast that's what sound I thought. nicer. Oh, and yeah, the shelf side, I'm using as like a, a like a bed desk area. So I have like this like. Oh, so you put your computer Netflix. there while you're watching Netflix, laying down, trying to fall yeah. asleep. Like, a little yeah, yeah, it's, it's nice. I have like two little <laughs> desk areas now, so it's it's pretty cute. So. You know, that's funny. Is that? Um, but yeah, it's it's great because you know this episode's going to be kind of a little more relaxed. You know, we're gonna we're gonna stri- sh- strafe away from our usual topic of video games to talk about video games. You know, like that's yeah. that's just like you know. Finally, I was gonna get really mad because you said strafe away from video games. I was like, that's why I'm here, man. I don't, <laughs> don't want to talk about life. I don't. I, <laughs> we're not gonna talk about uh, one series of video games. People. We're gonna talk about multiple series of video games. Jake, yeah, I believe yes, we're also gonna talk time. about uh the next year. Uh, this is going to be kind of an open question to you guys, the fans. Uh, and if you have your answers, leave them down below. Or if you want to send us by email or you want to send us some topics, theme song submissions or anything like that, 
please send that to us at ZeldaInformerPodcast at gmail.com. Once again, that's ZeldaInformerPodcast at gmail.com. Let's get back to the episode. <laughs> um, Plug. So, the reason that I was really excited about uh, playing Knights of the Republic 2 was the fact that it has, like, the restored content mod. And Which is awesome. Wait, that's only for PC, right? Yeah. Yes, because, I mean, you can get it on your console versions, but it's a lot more difficult. Because uh, yeah. it's, like, modding consoles. It's weird yeah. And strange. Trying to make But it's mod- awesome because Steam has, like, offered that to us, like. Yeah, yeah. Friends. They worked with the content, uh, the rest- restoration mod team to actually make sure it was available day one. The The sad thing is, is that the workshop for uh, Knights of Old Republic 2 is terrible. <laughs> like otherwise like there's this one mod to skip there's the like, tutorial sh- level but it's yeah. broken there's some like other like uh like mods like oh lightsaber colors and stuff but they're all broken yeah. pretty much everything is broken except for that so it's really just a way to get the uh restored content mod on there just games. get the full game in general Let's see yep so metal gear yeah, you guys want to talk about Metal Gear? Uh, Metal oh, Gear. Oh, I have feelings. Feel free. Well, Colin, would you like to... Wait, you know, like, Colin, oh, I guess this is, this is spoiler-free Metal Gear, right? Because I'm I, still, like I said, yeah, 5%. Yeah, I, I, I know. Yeah, Everyone... Yeah. Um, can I... Can I... <laughs> can I, uh, can I uh, say the one thing that I do do think that's pretty funny? No. <laughs> okay, then never mind. I guess I won't. No, yes. Okay, just yes, before you okay. say anything, just real quick, yes, it's going to be spoiler-free. I hate that it's only been out a week. Everyone suddenly thinks it's okay. No, to, please you know, don't, because I want to play it. And I oh, my. Let me just say, no, I, have, I, I have a friend on Facebook who's video uploading everything to Facebook of him playing Metal Gear. I'm like, yeah, stop I'm not, it. I don't like that. Yeah, I do stop. Like that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I do think it's I'm really funny. Japanese class, and everyone's a weeaboo, and like, ooh, Kojima, I don't like how this, this, that. I'm like, dude, shut up. Six months is uh, is fair for most games, but this game I tell all you, I want is a month, just one, just one month. Just stop posting yeah. spoilers. Please. I'm glad okay, that you just... you you three and Caleb have been very kind as to not spoil yeah. for me. I mean, uh, I haven't really I have... gone too far to spoil things. <laughs> so yeah, uh, okay, but so I do Adam, think you wanted to say something. Yeah, I think it's really funny. How at the end of every mission, it's like, when you're directed by Hideo Kojima. Oh my god, it's like, the, it. every, I'm like, I get it, the game There's was made by Hideo Kojima. the end of every single thing, and it I, always mentions Hideo Kojima in some capacity. I, I really wish when they okay. took his name off the box, they took his name out of the entire freaking game because of that. Well, it's like, not that, it's, yeah. just, it's just that it's like, it's too much to do it after every mission, am I right? Like, it's, I think... okay, there's two big problems that come from that. Uh, one, I, okay, so you, you said you wanted an episodic story structure, and that's fine. I right. honestly think episodic story is the best Yeah, it's great that you wanted world. to make Twin Peaks Metal Gear, but, you know. Uh, because, you know, like, you, you have smaller self-contained things, and, you know, and they overlap with each other, it's good. Uh, but the problem with him trying to make it episodic is that he's also spoiling it. Uh, there's, as I'm, as I'm sure you know, it's pre-release. Skullface is in the game. He's a he's a bad dude. Yeah. I didn't expect to see him in the first mission he appears, but it says something like uh, featuring Snake, Kaz, guest starring Skullface. I was like, oh, I so, guess I'm um, going to see him. Thanks, yeah. game, for spoiling it. Um, yeah. I honestly overlooked that entire wait, thing. It credits like, credits. As, also, wait, it credits them as their characters? Yep. Yeah, it's yeah. really Wait, corny. That's, it is that's, very corny. That's that's weird because now it's like, see, like putting the credits after every single like mission. It puts as credits an before and after. Is is it's it's cool for an episode thing, but as a game, it pulls you out of it a little yeah, bit too much. It's also, especially because the game itself and previous like titles in the series don't lend uh, themselves to that idea of like an episodic like TV show sort of thing. Like there is somewhat of a movie aspect to the story of Metal Gear, right? But it's not. It's that's not it. It's not. It, it doesn't rely on that. It's not like a video format sort of thing. There's I think no it's, other reference to that sort of idea. So I it's think kind the of reason awesome. why they're doing it also is because every mission is designed by a completely different group of people. It, it, I, I get that, but it's also a little self congratulatory. I mean, like, okay, so there's one mission early in the game, very early. It's not even mm-hmm. a spoiler. You just take out a commander of a platoon or whatever, and the thing is, is that there's it acts like okay, it says like written by Hideo or you know, uh, you know, whatever. But there, it's literally there's nothing special about the mission. It, if this were Peace Walker, that would be considered a side op because that guy, that enemy commander, doesn't say anything. He doesn't do anything differently from the other soldiers. He's just wearing a red beret. That's it. Well, the whole there's, game. There's is, no writing. There's no nothing. To me, and it's very like. To me, the game has know. been described multiple times as an as a sandbox game, like a true sandbox in a lot of ways, where. Okay. The mission is there, but you're really supposed to just explore and then eventually get to the mission. 
Yeah. Which seems very odd for a tactical espionage game to make I its mean, main goal kind of like, oh, when you're ready to, you know, go to it. Usually that's like the most important thing. You know, you, you take care of your main priority first. Well, it, it actually, well, for me well, personally, I take care of the smaller things to do around the map first before I go to the main thing because I want to try to get every. Yeah, yeah. of that's course, been, of course. I've been the side ops have a lot less urgency to them, I, which is fine. Uh, no, no. The main ops, you, you'll feel it a lot more. It's a lot more like pressure. In, yeah. In okay, the right way. that's good. I'm like, because to me, like the idea of like how people have described it to me, uh, without spoiling anything, is that it sounded like you know your main op doesn't matter or doesn't seem that vital in comparison to you know all the stuff you can and, do I mean, around the world it's the and, only thing that will push the story forward in of general. course uh, in a lot of ways of course right. but um espionage like, especially tactical espionage is very time limited stuff like it should be like very high pressure it should be like you should feel like every moment counts you know you miss a second and uh, someone could die that's that's the sort of thing you know it shouldn't be like oh well, this guy's getting tortured but you know he could he could stand being tortured for another eight hours you know no, but, they do have that aspect though because like okay. you have they have give you like a time cycle so it's like you have a certain amount of time to do something at night a certain amount of time to do things during the day like you can only mm-hmm. this isn't necessarily a spoiler but like to get d dog you have to be at a, at a mission at a certain point like of day and night to get him or else he's not going to be there okay so that's no that's, that's yeah. more like uh that's more like a being there on like yeah it's almost like flag. animal crossing you where like it's it's like a time window that you can do a certain event. yeah, yeah no, that's, that's there's what time windows where you ha- where you can either let's say you need to assassinate someone you need to go save someone there's like the yeah there's one mission where i had to go in and they were moving this one character around who i wanted to take with me to mother base but i'm like god dang it why isn't he just staying in this one place for this period of time it's so you have to act fast sort mm-hmm. like or you're gonna have to rearrange your entire like way of how you're doing uh how you want to do the the mission so right yeah I mean, they have when he, they said there's a bunch of different ways you can do this, and it sort of all matters depending on like what rank or what grade you want at the end of the mission. They weren't lying, so I mean, I guess let me we- tell you something. Uh, for all you new Metal Gear fans, you will probably have a better time uh, feeling this game around than, than veterans. I feel, uh, and the reason I say that is because in, in previous Metal, if you're if you're if you're a veteran, you're kind of niche to like wanting to never get caught, don't kill anyone. In this game, uh, okay, Adam, you you know Chris Byer. This yeah. is like his first true to form Metal Gear. He's gotten consistent S ranks because he's just done silly stuff. Like, um, <laughs> it's what, it's amazing. What do you mean? Okay, um, Jake, let me be honest with you right now. This is my first real Metal Gear game. Like, okay, I, and so you coming guys... in as an outsider, it's like. I understood that a lot of the people just, you know, trank everything, just do everything quiet, don't get caught, don't kill anyone. And that worked out for a time, and then I run out of ammunition, and I don't have to, I can't really call just in call a blimp. Or, I would call, call a supply drop. I would, I would do that, but like, then they would see me, and cause I'm no, right don't. there. They don't I'm, see the supply balloons fall. Yeah, they were on the radio like, I just saw a balloon drop. Go check it. And then I I'm have like, never had that problem ever, and I've like called in supplies like in the middle of a fort. Well, I mean, I did, and I got caught, and I was like, "God damn it!" And I, I there was times where I'm restarting missions Jake just trying to get the nice shift. Hey, Chris, yeah, get get good. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm trying. So I just end up shooting half the people and tranking half the people. A couple of things I wanted I wanna... to point out there is that uh, Metal Gear has never. Most people see Metal Gear as being some sort of like big stealth simulator. It has never been a stealth game. It, it has stealth elements, but that's never <laughs> been no. As someone who's played every single fucking game in the franchise, it is... As have I, go on. <laughs> it's, it's barely a stealth game. It's more Ow. like, don't get caught in the cone of sight, and you're good. Uh, okay. If I you were to compare it to something like Thief, it's... no. <laughs> I mean, couldn't you make the argument that any game that tackles stealth is just about staying out of the cone of sight? Well, it's... it's a... it's... you're... Especially in this game, this is this is a game where, unlike other Metal Gears, if you just shoot someone loudly in the face, the game doesn't care. Well, it's no. It's, this game cares a lot less about that sort yeah. of thing. It's tactical it's ops. A lot it's more... not a sneaking. Let's. It, there's a distinction there because tactical ops is you know it's a military thing. You know, there's soldiers. They're trying to be quiet. They're trying to you know prevent a minimal like uh, incidents. You know, minimal distraction, minimal uh, caught. Ca- casualties that sort of thing 
but it doesn't mean they don't accept that it will happen. Games like Thief, you know, you're, you're trying at your best to literally be undetected. Games like Dishonored, you're trying your best to be literally undetected. This game, you kind of can be, and it's fine. I compare Metal Gear, though, to other games that try to do stealth, like uh, the Arkham series, and there are just so many subtle things that make Metal Gear a better can stealth we just experience. Talk- yeah, no, like, like, Arkham- are you, do you want to talk about how Arkham City has, like, the most broken game mechanics I've ever played? It, like, I just want to say I revisited that game and I wanted to scream. I it's, think it's I think so Metal Gear Solid has a better experience because so it's also funky. a little easier in terms of like Arkham. It's you have to deal with the same type of game mechanics over and over and over again. Also, it's not even really in a fun way. Like okay, so there's something that Arkham desperately needs that Metal Gear has, and it's the most simple thing in the world. Are you guys ready? I can demonstrate it right now. Are you ready? What? Oh, wait, before you do, Jake, I just want you to know I finished Arkham Knight. It wasn't that good. I mean, no, it was pretty. All you do, it was good. Is you just. Just knock. Snake knocks. It it completely throws off a soldier. He he goes to inspect it. You sneak around. It's the best thing ever. Arkham doesn't do that. So it's a lot of just sitting and waiting on like another precariously placed gargoyle head and just yeah. waiting for something to happen. Because because Batman there's a lot needs, of subtle things. You know, stuffing bodies in lockers, hiding in, in lockers. The Arkham you know. franchise relies on on Batman using really cool tech and not on being clever. It's about him. Being clever know, with Batman's his amazing clever. his amazing gadgets. It's not him being clever or using a rock. <laughs> it's really unless not. it's like it's a super really techno not. bat rock. Because oh, no. every takedown you do in Arkham, you feel terrified because there's no way you're gonna do it silently. There's a huge probability you're gonna get spotted for it. I mean, it's called it's it's called predator mode. You know, like you're supposed <laughs> to be silent, taking them down, and you know you're gonna get caught. Yeah. You're just I, going to get caught. There's, but yeah. it, I don't know. What were we talking about? <laughs> uh, there's one thing I wanted to mention. But if I want to kind of wrap up the the Metal Gear discussion, if that's fine, um, just that, yeah, it's fine because that because Colin, you mentioned this earlier, how every single mission is designed by a different team. That's how a lot of games are, <laughs> but you don't see every rock texture signature in a game just so that you know that Bill did it. <laughs> As a co- like, they they should be a team. It shouldn't be Jim and Bill and Carrie and 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 Blake and Nancy and Drew. I mean, and, you can also skip well, the credit I mean, sequences Adam, if you just don't like, get into the helicopter at the end of every mission. But okay, I'm just saying they do it in the beginning too, like in the beginning segments. Yeah, but it's like oil. two like seconds. The credit scene at the end is sleep. where you credit everyone. The credits are supposed like, to be one solid thing. In like one right, chunk, when, so if you are when you look, you can go to see that. A lot of you look at movies. Be, movies do intro credits too. Yeah, Not but a lot, lot of well, sure. But, but they'll also mention know. if they if they really want to, and a lot of games do this too. If someone worked specifically on one level or one area, they'll mention it. They'll say, uh, like you know, uh, the desert level was designed by. But this again, team. it's only also you know, if you only do it from the helicopter. If you start and end with the helicopter, if you are in the map, and you just go. I'm going to do this mission right now. It doesn't do either. Let me let me just say, though, like, I mean, this I is ultimately fine, the fans' but... fault for wanting Kojima's name on the box. Instead of, like, we're not going to put his name on the box. We're just going to put it all over the game. I mean, that, that decision <laughs> had to have made long before. I know. I just debacle. I just thought, I'm like, wow, I've never wanted, like, his name not on Which the game so much Which means that I don't feel now. as bad for him that his name was taken off the box because it's everywhere else. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, wow. You, okay. like, you zoom in on Snake's, like, butt, and it's just tattooed on the underside of the left cheek. Enough. Let me, uh, real quick, because I, I know we want to move away from this. I have to ask, though, how do you guys feel now that it's all said and done, it's confirmed, it's whatever, it's here, Kiefer Sutherland, his performance, what do you guys think? Uh, it's good. 10 out of 10, it's good. I mean, I never had a problem with it. Yeah. I mean, it's... it's, not... it's... <laughs> I mean, no, right, now, getting, right, for, getting... This is different for me, because I'm not used to the big boss's old voice. I mean, putting aside all of the various theories and possible spoilers um I, it makes sense for big boss to have a different voice because he had a different voice in all the other metal gears that aren't like before metal Ge- like like every metal gear after metal gear one and two big boss had a different voice from from snake so it makes sense that at some point his voice is going to change I no, I do get that, but one thing that still throws me off is the reasoning behind it and how I don't really see where it paid off in the game. Like they said that uh, they wanted to have a more 
you know, like mature performance, and they wanted to do this, that, the other, that only Kiefer can really pull well, off. Well, I mean, but Ocelot has a different really voice, talk. too. Like, half Why the... is Ocelot a cowboy now? He's Russian. I don't understand. Troy Baker's such a better voice actor than that. I don't... He's so off-putting in that game. I mean, Ocelot... Can I just say, like a yeah. he's, he's a very voice. handsome man in that game, and... Oh, and he's he, man candy. It gives me the vapors. I mean, I, also, Ocelot was never Russian in the first place, but, um, <laughs> sorry to spoil, like, a ten-year-old video game, you guys, but, uh... I mean, his allegiance is right, and he's speak. I, I don't, like, isn't he, like, Russian the way Eva was, like, American, even though she was Chinese or something? He's a double agent. This is all in the credits of Metal Gear Solid 3. Listen, guys, that. listen, just enjoy the game. MGS5 is probably game of the year right now. Yeah. That's, I'm, I'm enjoying the $60 I spent on this, I'm like, this is a game worth... That much money. No, it's so. great. It's it's fantastic. I Kiefer, we'll talk about that another day, I guess. Moving on. Yeah, um, moving on. Onto a game that probably only I have played. Um, uh, Zelda. The PS4. No, the PS4. <laughs> the PS4 finally actually has a video game worth owning, and it's called Until Dawn. Until Dawn. Yep. You know, I was deciding whether I should get Metal Gear recently. first or Until Dawn, and I chose Metal Gear, and I feel like I made a bad move. I bought cause... Until Dawn to hold me over until... Metal Gear until Solid dawn. released later until, that night. Wait, does this mean you aren't into Bloodborne? Like, you didn't like it? I mean, Dark Souls is better. I, I hear that. I never played Dark Souls. That's the thing. Jake, I still haven't gotten Dark, uh, Bloodborne yet, but it's the next on my list after Bloodborne. Bloodborne is after Bloodborne? No, no, no. I, no a I Bloodborne? Mean, it's, yeah, it's after my list after Until Born after it's, Bloodborne. It's the same game as the other Dark Souls games, and the Dark Souls games are better anyway. So I own the other two, I just haven't played them. <laughs> there's, just, there's no reason to be like, oh man, there's a spin-off exclusive one on the PS4. That's well, it's, I mean, it's next-gen, you know, I, I could start with that, and then I'll go back and play the other games, because it's not canon to the other one, so it's fine. I want to talk to you guys about something that's been bothering me recently. What's it was been bothering nice. you? Go What's for bothering it? you this time? Pokemon Go. Great. Oh my I'm god. Here. I don't know. I'm more excited it about that than a new Pokemon game. 100% a microtransaction game. Oh, you think so? Is. Because yeah. Dude, it, says, it says in-app purchases are in this game already. Like I mean, in-app purchases are also in like Fallout. And, for and, it didn't, Articuno. it didn't matter either. But Adam, Adam, picture this. I mean, Fallout 4 is a rare Adam, exception. Adam, picture this. Fallout, Fallout Shelter is a rare exception of a game that use, has microtransactions but doesn't really require them. But I mean, you also have to remember oh, yeah, that I, I, the assholes who I play will phone not be games. Surprised. Guys, let, let, yeah. guys, just picture this. Picture this. Are you, are you picturing? Yes. Just close your eyes picturing. for a second. Y'all like gamer girls, right? Right. Uh, so, uh, I, what is, as a, uh, I'm just gonna sit out and wait for this to be relevant, but go on. Okay, go on, go on Chris. <laughs> Imagine taking a girl out on a date. Be like, all right, we're gonna do something stupid and something crazy. Okay. And so you're like, let's go catch the Pokemon around our town. And you get out your phones, and, you and then you lists. imagine an area full of Bidoof. <laughs> no, you walk around, and you because it's going to be like you guys ever hear of the app called Ingress? Yeah, but can you yeah, imagine yeah, yeah. if your re region is full of Bidoof? Well, I can mean, you imagine being the kid from the Bidoof region? No one wants to treat imagine that how many. Imagine how funny that day would be, and then it'd be like, "Wow, this would be the best experience ever," and be like, "Oh, sweet, I've mentioned this, this before. Yeah, that, turned great. That I've mentioned this before, but th that <laughs> game exactly punishes people." <laughs> Who can't go anywhere? Yeah. Uh, so oh, yeah. That's, I mean, that's the, why you go out when you're reality games out. do that. You you have to be on the move. In order that's to what I'm saying. Like, it but would that's be absurd. Because that's that's like, can you imagine? Like, it's a, it's ridiculous to imagine like someone who's able to you know travel a lot like via plane and things like that is able to get more Pokemon in the world yeah. just because of that fact. Are you saying this because you don't have a car, Adam? I'm saying this because I'm I'm Kids poor. Kids walk. I don't have a lot of money, Chris. Adam, when we hang out, we'll go on a date, and then we can go catch all the hundred thousand billion Pokemon. I I'm, all right, I'm let just, me just saying say that, like, you're, I, you're all a fan of it, the first. The, the trailer Pokemon. confused a lot of people because some people it think is. this is Pokemon augmented reality. It is not it's people. Not. It is a it's very a very, very fall, bland very app on trailer. your phone that looks like a regular Pokemon game, but on your phone right. it, and it's I mean, bland. That's that's what it is. The trailer I'm sure we'll... is it's I I'm really surprised at this point that they even got the trailer up because it's such it deceives people and it doesn't make at any point uh, a it disclaimer. Didn't show any accurate gameplay? It doesn't show accurate Wait, gameplay whoa, 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 and it doesn't disclaim any of its claims. Hang on a second. A is video it game advertisement being completely different from the video game. 
guys, we better call Ripley's Believe It hey, or Not. Hey, that's hey, a, hey, Colin, that's you want crazy it? Shit. Colin, Colin, let's play a game. It's called Wait, Let's Go Watch Every Single. Wait, are you telling me that if I Colin, download Game Colin, of War, Colin, I don't get Kate Colin, Upton in my Colin, house on my Colin, phone? Colin, 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 let's Colin. go watch every single video game trailer and you'll see a disclaimer underneath any area that isn't part of the actual game because there's a law in the U.S. <laughs> and that prevents people from doing that, from making false claims because there was a toy that came out for, uh, for kids at one point that in the commercials was talking and kids cried when the toy didn't actually that. talk and lawsuits were filed and that was added to U.S. law to prevent such a case from happening again. So I'm actually really surprised this game that this game's trailer doesn't have any disclaimers stating that there isn't any augmented reality segments of the game. And they could do it too. I mean, with your camera. I mean, whatever. It's, they could, I don't know why it's but so... but they they aren't. So they should have a disclaimer in there because people are going to. So assume. little we know about it right now that it's too it's too early to judge it. We know and we know enough that it, we know. But that people have. Be. Praise it out the butt. I mean, if it's good, it's good. Yeah. I mean, and, I'll and probably, Pokemon it's games, free. I'll download it. I'm going to clarify. Jake, you you and Lyra point. can go out and have a blast. I promise. You I can clarify one time. thing. Thanks, bud. By the way, you don't need to go out and have a blast. You can just play Yoshi's Woolly World. It's the same thing. It's just as fun for a date night. Anyway. Oh, uh, my God. You praise Yoshi. Anyway, we'll talk uh, about that later. <laughs> uh, Pokemon games uh, have notoriously crazy trailers for whatever mm-hmm. reason. Uh, but usually they Oh, yeah. With like Dylan and Cole Sprouse walking on the beach. Oh, I remember that. For Pokey Walkers. I don't even remember that. (laughs) I hate the way they said Pokemon. It's they said Pokemon. I I have Pokemon Gold, Heart Gold version. And I have Pokemon Pokemon. A silver version. And I'm walking around the beach getting walk points for my freaking Eevee. (laughs) It was so funny. I love that. I still have my Poke Walker. My Poke. Uh, yeah, actually, I think I see mine right now. It's just in the corner. It's on the shelf. The box that Heart Gold came in is such a nice box. Same with Soul yeah, I still have my, my limited edition Ho-Ho that it came with. And, I, and I, I can show you mine if you'd like, Jake. We could bond. <laughs> <I don't... laughs> he Whatever. wants to show you his Ho-Ho. I, either way. <laughs> I was saying something earlier. I just forgot. Something. Sure. I wasn't about the date. The po- was it about Pokemon? <gasps> actually, all right. I want to talk about their marketing, actually, about this. Yeah, about the trailer. I like how they only use Pokemon from the first 150. That was yeah. a very smart decision. That was yeah. very smart. Yeah, I'm I like, think so that's too. How they, that's how you appeal to like more than just like the current Pokemon fans, but like older ones as well. Well, you appeal to the masses because most people know like, all the first 150 are recognized. Yeah, everyone knows, knows Pikachu. Pikachu. Everyone knows Charizard. Former Charizard's. fans Nostalgia and, you know, the, everyone already knows those anyway. So yeah. I'm sure over who's, time they'll probably expand. Who's, who's going to be willing to shell out money for like an external device that connects to your smartphone? 30 something year olds and 20 something year olds not fi- not 10 year olds not 12 year olds they might get one but they're not going to be able to shop themselves like an android oh my god this is terrible what happened what if they have like a connection between pokemon go and nx because of android rumored software it's possible i did you, have you guys read the uh the leaked uh disclaimer the, the, the i mean the, the leaked information for the nx i did the not the patent thing i did not dislike it I was very like, wait. I'm are you are you, okay. are you talking about the patent thing that that could be the NX or it could just be a disk list? Uh, Not you? the patent specifically. Um, there was a guy who I mean uh, you got to take it with a grain of salt. Uh, someone who apparently works uh, with uh, Nintendo Japan was under strict NDA, but they kind of anonymously leaked a bunch of features of the NX, mm-hmm. and um, it. Is not going to be as powerful as the PS4, allegedly. It'll be close. <laughs> It'll be close to the specs. Oh, I, I know. It makes me cry. I want. That's the one thing I, I want from Nintendo. But it's going to do something interesting. It's going to take like the idea of a gamepad and kind of, um, kind of. Okay, so they they kind of want to fuse together like the home console and, and handheld, where like you can basically stop and start a game and then like go take like a handheld and like continue playing it on your day to day. Mm-hmm. Like basically, imagine you're playing like Smash Wii U, or let me find a better example. Let's say you're spl- you're playing Splatoon, and then you just like take your gamepad, but just leave the house with it and just keep playing. Like, but I, I want my cool. I want my 3ds for that. I don't want to have to take my gamepad and then have no, my well, 3ds. No, that's the thing. There, it's it's both parts like uh, handheld. Like all the handheld games apparently want to work on the console too, and vice versa. It's basically just uh, I just PS4's see remote play issues. Yeah, it's a remote play basically, but okay. I don't know. I mean, it's all it's all like in one. It's all integrated. I, I guess you weren't here when we were talking about the whole like this whole NX Chris's thing, like hatred just, of the Wii U. 
I don't hate the Wii U. I just wish it was more like a traditional Xbox, <laughs> PlayStation type of thing with ju- solely, you know, it was just, just as powerful. Those consoles had a great controller, also had gamepad and 3DS support. And sure. then, Bill, I don't so. hate the food that you cooked. I just wish it was pizza. <laughs> no, I don't wish anything was pizza. Yeah, pizza's the enemy right now. <laughs> I'm sorry. Just thought that was it's okay. Oh, man. Harrison. I just, I, I just, um, a lot of a lot of people's fears are being suspected, though, that they're ready to abandon the Wii U, and that's disappointing. That is, because like there are a lot of people who are on the fence about getting one now, and now they've jeopardized future sales because it's like, well, why would I get a Wii U now? Well, and the NX is coming. Out. Yeah, that was. Really and they're moving dumb games idea. too. Like, um, like they they said they were. I won't be surprised you know, if Zelda U moves to the NX. Uh, I won't be surprised. I mean, I don't. I don't know that, how I feel about it. That I I want there to be more support for the Wii U. I bought one this last year for a reason to get games for it. And I've gotten a lot of the big games that came out, you know, Splatoon, Smash Bros, Mario Kart 8. I'm looking forward to Mario Maker. Not necessarily making the Marios, but playing the Mario. That's coming Wooly out this World. weekend, isn't it? Comes it out, is. Yeah, it comes tomorrow. out Friday. Yeah. I'm very excited for that. Colin, are you excited for it? For Mario Maker? Yeah. Um... I'll pick it up when it's on sale. I don't know. If, Same. I don't know if sixty dollars uh, is really. I'm not gonna buy it. At lunch, I, but I, I, I will buy it. Time. I thought it was gonna be like fifty. Nope. Uh, uh, well, though I mean, I'm I'm gonna be honest. I wish there was a handheld version. I wish there was a 3ds version of Mario Maker. On the NX, you would be I, able to do that. I don't know if I said this. I got a 32 gigabyte SD card for my 3ds the other day, and it was the best decision of my life. I have a 64 gigabyte. <laughs> you know what? Me. You know what, dude? Just get out of here. Shut up. You don't need. Yeah, that. I have a 64 gig also. God, I hate you guys. Nerd. <laughs> no. Get good. Thanks, Best Buy, for screwing up that one time and listing all your Samsung SD cards for a dollar. <laughs> Man, Best Buy always wants to sell me a phone, and I, I, it gets to a point where I get nervous if I'm anywhere near a Best Buy employee. Did you tell like, me you have a phone? <laughs> I mean, I do. But it's You're like, hey, it's I have this... phone. You get, you take out your phone, you make a phone call talking about how much you love your phone, phone right in front of them, and they still try to sell you a new one. I mean. Like I, I feel bad because that you know that's they they have to make sales that that's their job yeah you know, they, right you know they have to do that but or they don't have a job anymore. <laughs> Jake, I just feel when you get I older like and you get telemarketers calling you, be like, listen, Sonny, I already have insurance. Oh, you know, it'd be funny right. if you, you like know what I'd love te- to do? a telemarketer calls you and you pretend to also be a telemarketer. <laughs> you know what I love to do with telemarketers and especially uh, scams on the phone. What? Okay. Is I will I will kind of like I'll kind of play with them a little bit like I'll make them think that I'm I'm gonna like lock down like uh, especially if it's a scam I'll be like that sounds like a you're telling me if I send you five hundred dollars you're gonna send me a car what I would and like in the middle of my sentence I hang up like the phone disconnected <laughs> wow uh, I always um I always <laughs> so they like scream inside the telemarketer people especially the ones that are always like sir I work for Windows and we detected a virus through your router. I always, oh my I, god! I always that love to go my... through the various process and goes like go like, "Hey, do you know how computers actually work?" And then hang up. It's funny because my grandfather, who's an old man, he got a phone call like that one time, and I swear to God, he I wouldn't. He was cursing at the wild zoo at this guy over the phone. And he hung up. He's like, he says the words I can't say on the podcast, but I'm like, dang, like he doesn't even know. Like those guys were either joking or trying to just get stupid things. He just got so furious, like furious with him. What yeah. was it? Like telemarketers scam? It was like no the the, the virus on through your router. Oh, okay. oh that is speaking of viruses and, and stuff, did you guys see and I hate to get political, but did you see that the guy who made McAfee is running for uh president of Great. the US? Everyone everyone's running for president. Jeez. Wait, who's running? <laughs> you know the guy you know McAfee, the virus program? Uh yeah. He's the guy who made it is you running mean for McAfee? President. Yeah, I've said McAfee for the longest time. Did you guys, <laughs> that Norton virus protection is running for president? It's true. My dad works <laughs> yeah, for a vast. Anyway. AVG is also... You know, it's that. just funny. He said, like, I could probably win the presen- presidential election, like, never getting out of my bed. Like, Man, I, just kind of I can't believe my Donald bedroom. Trump actually has a, has a shot at all this. I'm, I'm sorry to get political with y'all. It's all right. Man, Donald Trump, he's really? He's a silly guy. Anyway. Uh, you know, Huffington Post doesn't report him under news anymore. They report him, or they don't report him under politics. They report him under entertainment. <laughs> Wait, who? <laughs> who did Donald they Trump. That's absurd. <laughs> Anyways, out of politics. Geez. Back to video games. Back to video games. Democracy Three West, is a great game. Damn it! Game? That's politics still. Oh, I was like, uh, first thing I thought you were making a Civ reference. Adam, jeez. No, no, that's Democracy. just that. That would be followed by weeping. 
Hey, you know what I think we should do? Because it is the last episode that I, I'm here for. What? I think we should talk about at least something Zelda. Just uh, let's thing. let's get into one of our fan topics. Let's then. talk about Majora's Mask. We, we could talk let's about. Let's do. Oh. Well, <laughs> I'm kidding. we could talk. Unless the topic is it. <laughs> we uh. <laughs> Uh, we could talk about the news that Toon Link is playable in Hyrule Warriors Legends, but I really don't care. We could talk about the... Uh, can, wait, the, can I just say, I'm looking forward to the 3DS version of Hyrule, Hyrule Warriors. Yeah, we, like, we talked about the same. Ca- Colin and me were talking about this. Like, you know, it's a, it's a beat em up on the go, you know? It's a hack and well, slash on the go. It, I it's will like only get amazing. it if it will let me transfer my save data and I have the money at the time. I'll I haven't played through the whole thing again. I, I didn't get, get the fun. first one, so I'm excited about it. Dude, that's too much time. There's, like, it was such a time sink. Listen, if they, if, like, tomorrow, uh, Suda51, uh, was like, oh, we're gonna port Lollipop Chainsaw to PC, I'd play the whole f- yeah. thing again. I mean, I get that, it's just, I, I don't know. Same, same like thing with, like, God the Hand. opportunity like, if they, to let you carry over your save, and that would be great if they did, and I would just love that. Yeah. I wish more games did that. Last uh, last one, things that I was happy about that I oh, saw yeah, that are Zelda related, uh, Triforce Heroes is gonna have a map. Like Four Swords Adventures, which is perfect. It's literally, oh, it's yeah. literally the perfect like successor to to Four Swords Adventures now. Like I, 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 I have, I have no more complaints levels. at all. <laughs> uh, who was it that said they weren't excited for it? Was that Jeff? Uh, yeah, yeah. And Jeff is Jeff Jeff's is wrong. A doofus. And <laughs> Jeff if, is wrong. If you're listening to this, go to zeldainformer.com. Find find Jeff's latest arg- article and tell him he smells. And say love Adam. Oh, right. and, he's, and write. He also writes for and write Gamnesia love Adam. Too, yeah, so if you want to go to Gamnesia too, say Jeff, you smell d- love Adam. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I someone linked me to a Gamnesia post today about the Pokemon thing, um, and I saw who wrote it. And it was Jeff. I'm like, oh, I'm like, you know, I know the guy who wrote this. Like, oh, how? I'm like, you should listen to my I love podcast Jeff. with that. <laughs> Can I just say that? Then, uh, then, Jeff. Then, uh, it's okay. Ten, uh, ten. Anyway, let's get to one of our fan topics. Uh, let's do it. Thomas asks, if there was a game where you played as Ganondorf, what would it be about? What genre of game would it be? And what would the story be like? It would be an RPG. It would be called Dragon Quest Ganondorf <laughs> Edition. And then you would just do get friends. And then you'd beat dragons. You remember Hyrule course. Warriors? It'd be like that. <laughs> it'd be God Hand. God hand you know what it'd be? It'd be, it would be a, it would be a political power simulator where you It'd be, it'd be God slowly, of War, kind of. Yeah, pretty much. What if, oh, that'd be awesome! What if, what if Ganondorf was like the video game embodiment of Donald? You know Trump? what? It, it'd be a Cooking Mama clone, and uh, yeah, Cooking. He he cooks up this, some trouble. Mama? Next question. Wow, even better than Mama. <laughs> yep. Uh, I do like the idea of like a God of War esque thing, where you know he's like slowly getting more powerful as like a Dark Lord as he defeats. Oh, he has he has to fight the other like Hyrule gods. Yes, he has. No, he has to fight like let's say like there's other people that are vying to be like the print like the King of Darkness or whatever. And oh, he has I, to... I thought I thought the whole idea of God of War was like they fight. Well, yeah, well, I like, mean, obviously he can't fight like it can't be that. He can't, can't fight like cosmic. he can't fight like Faror and like Kratos. Can you imagine him pummeling Faror in the face relentlessly? That, that would, would be, be awesome. horrible. Uh, I, I would mean, horrible in the eyes of the I wouldn't innocent. say it. <laughs> um, that would be you. But yeah, I can imagine like f- fighting other like suitors for like th- the throne of darkness, and he's like slowly gaining their power as a, like kind of like Mega Man, but with with that just sounds like a WrestleMania match. Like it's him and he's trying to get the brief Royal Rumble. Yeah. So so <laughs> instead of hitting them, he's not really hitting them. He just kind of like fake hits them. Oh, that'd be cool! Like a WWE port, like for the Wii U, and it's just like a DLC's Ganondorf. That would be awesome. It'd be, it'd be wrestling, but it'd actually be entertaining for once. Yeah, I, I always used to and say like, that the wrestling games were actually like more real than a. Uh, oh, they are because, and they're more entertaining. They are because yeah. like they're not faking stuff up there. I punched dude and he bled. I mean, he has a hitbox. I mean, with, with I'm, I'm actually excited. Game, I, I'm, doing I'm excited to get 2K16. I've never been excited to get a wrestling game ever. I used to love never, them, dude. I've only gotten I one. I got the ones for the N64, but like now I'm excited to get 2K16. I had SmackDown vs. Raw 08 Jake, on the Wii, and it was not Jake, good. Wait, are the, do those games <laughs> still have like create or wrestler? Yeah, yeah, they do. Uh, Jake, yeah. Well, uh, they said that 2016's version is going to be Jake, a lot better because 2015 sucked, 2014 We yes. should get that game and then make our own wrestlers and make our weird creations fight to the death. I used to love uh, customizing the Undertaker's costume so he wore a pink leotard. That's I think, uh, but I think we've answered the fan topic. Maybe 
<laughs> yeah, good enough. There's yeah, an answer wrestling. in there, I'm sure. Thank it's, you, Tom. It's, it's wrestling. It's a wrestling simulator, also goats. Thank you. Thank you. See me, I Thank you, Thomas, uh, for sending us your email. If you have any of your own yes, topics, you. theme song submissions, artwork, anything like that, send it to us. Once again, it's Podcast at gmail.com. We'd love to read them. We'll try our best to give you an answer, despite all our goofiness. Uh, so yeah, do you guys want to answer another, or do you want to, you know, get back to? Yeah, our... man, I'm, I, I like this role. I like this. All right, let's get on the roll. Uh, hey guys, this if any, and if any gals, hey. there are none. Uh, how are you all today? Good, I hope. My question is, what new items or weapons would you like to see, or even return in future Zelda games? I would like to see another ball and chain weapon that you can swing and crush enemies. Maybe a chain whip weapon that grabs an enemy and swing around them. Even Martin. Thank you, Martin, for sending us your topic. Um, I like it's not an item necessarily. Jake, you missed the I, first part of the question. Oh, which was how are you today? You're Jake. Oh, you're doing well. Uh, darn. <laughs> um, uh, it's been a hard week. <laughs> it's actually been pretty rough lately, but whatever. I'm uh, doing okay, and I want the duck walk to come back from Zelda. I, all right, I have a, I have a thing. I have a the thing. Duck walk. Okay. Yes. I, I have a quick thing. So, like, you know how in Ocarina of Time, you could switch, like, your boots and your tunics mm-hmm. sure. and your swords and your shields? There has to be a section where you could switch your hats, and then you can get an Ezlo hat, and that would be great. I think, I, I did, why did we even need to ask you, Chris? You, you, we already know the answer at this point. <laughs> why are you talking like Adam and I want, I want, In the 90s. Uh, I mean, you mean, like, Billy Madsen, or whatever the heck his yeah, name Billy, is? Yeah, Billy, that was his name, yes, thank you. That was a good movie. I, saw that. I actually that was one. I was about to say that was a bad movie. Let's bring movies. back Billy Madison <laughs> as an item. Means yeah, I want to play as Billy Madison. He needs to be an equipable partner. Yeah, give the next with the golf club. He, uh, he defeats uh, evil. Boss in the next. I want Legend no. I want a Doyle. Hey, Link, you need to watch out. <laughs> There's a guy over you, there. You, you need to watch out. No, but uh, bring back <laughs> the going, camera. Going, make the camera more interactive. Doyle, Link. Got him with the. What they should do is. Every photo you take with the camera, because I know the camera's in a few games, you should be able to post, like, photos in your house. I do love the selfie like, from like, Wind Waker. So, I would bring back selfies from Wind like, Waker. 100%. Like, pin them against, like, your, your wherever Link stays, or <laughs> where he stay at. Put, put wherever, like, all the photos he's ever taken. Or, like, a certain amount of them. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Um, I kind of miss... I, not kind of. I, I miss the magic meter, and a lot of the, the, the 3D Zeldas haven't had them in a while. Twilight Princess didn't do it, Skyward Sword didn't do it. I miss them. I don't know. Whatever. They were cool. They made you feel Magic more was important. enchanted instead of just arsenal-y. Arsenal-y is fine, yeah. but I don't know. I want more. I like fire arrows. I like ice rods. I, I love like the fi- fire rod whatever. and ice rod. Those are cool. Those are cool items. Yeah. I want stuff like that. Also, I want the hook shot to stop being awful. <laughs> like, no, because I hate... I don't... Okay. You're shooting a harpoon into someone's head and it, it makes them go, Oh, I can't move for a little bit, guys. Just give, give me. I, I like, a little bit. Just give me a second here. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get you in a little bit. I feel like the hook <laughs> shot would make a lot more sense if it was like blunt on the front. It had hooks on the sides, so like it, like mate, like you, you shoot at someone and like hits them in the head, and they like kind of like get dizzy. Adam, if I harpooned you in the head, would you, would you like? <laughs> I would have a concussion, cushion, or be dead. I, I think. I, would, you, have a would you, would you, would you turn concussion. blue for a little bit? And then for four seconds past, you're like, Jake, that wasn't very nice. Now I, I'm gonna approach you. I would turn blue and never get up. <laughs> now I'm I'm gonna approach you. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. Like weapons of harpoon. Actually, yeah. What I fear Who's is that my they'll special make, guy. Like, weapon amiibos. <laughs> what if they make weapon amiibos that like power up your weapons uh, in the, as a game? I have feelings That's about just... amiibos now. <laughs> I have feelings about Jake's amiibos too. Can I give too. everyone a suggestion? Is... Just move to Disney Infinity yeah. at this point. It's it's better amiibos. Adam, be quiet. I actually own two, or I own a lot of Disney Infinity. But you can things. find them. Um, not that's you can find them. What? Yes. You can find all of them. That's that's my whole that's my oh, whole thing. Uh, right, but like they're so cheap, they broke. Like I have two of them that broke in half. Like the characters, they still work. Like the little pads, oh, but the characters but do they broke look in half. Nice? And make me very mad. Uh, no, they're broken, Adam. <laughs> they, they broke. <laughs> There's no better way to put it. They suck. <laughs> um, I, w- w- while we're on the topic of I can Amiibos, totally, can I, I, can I just I, mention I can totally see the, the, uh, the Game & Watch ones snapping constantly? Because I yeah. have doubt that those are going to be any better than the current ones. Oh, those yeah. going to be like... Like, they're, they're probably going to be a little more prone to destruction. Yeah, just but snapping. Chris, you had something you wanted to tell tell the world. <laughs> I did. I did have something I wanted to tell everyone. <laughs> Sorry. So, 
So, the, I, all right, I'm a user of the the social media platform called Snapchat, yes, right? Yes. And I, you know, I have I have friends on there. Pokemon I have people Snapchat. like Adam, people like Jake, and people like Caleb. Uh-huh. So I haven't opened this app in a while, and so I opened it up and I go see if anyone's added me. Um, and I see, oh, my good friend Jake has added me on Snapchat. Let me click and accept. It says, oh, I have two snaps. Oh, they weren't from me. They were from, uh, from, from Larry. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. I also added Jake's girlfriend and I had two snaps Lyra. pending from him. Like, oh, let me check. Um, the first one, uh, I forgot what it was, but let me tell you the <laughs> second one. <laughs> this second one was great. Now, now we all know Jake has an amiibo s- obsession, uh, just a little bit. It's he's, starting, he's it's really starting to, to fan down a little bit, but go on. Right. I guess this was, uh, this had to be at its peak. Yes. I, Open this Snapchat, and lo and behold, I see a ring of amiibos all facing towards what seemed to be a, a menacing naked Jake. <laughs> and I, I just couldn't help but like gasp I, and say, "Oh my!" I was naked, bowing. and I was posing were- very like uh, sadistically in front of them. And um, Lyra took a picture of it and sent it to sent it to a few people. Most of them saved it. So now that's I, it, Chris included. So do I have it? Guilty as charged. <laughs> no, you saw it. Now, like I said, you read it and then you, like you you, you know at least sometimes Snapchat it. has issues where I it says that I I should maybe it was one of those times where like it 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 got to my phone. Maybe I just blocked it from my memory at this point. I don't even know. I don't even I can't even remember it. But it yeah, doesn't sound out of place. Chris, Regard- you, can, you can send it to send it to Adam. <laughs> Oh yeah, good! Like, I just had them all like line up on the table and face me, and uh... yeah, I'm um, just after that moment, I'm like, I knew, I knew that in there, Jake was the amiibo king. Yeah, <laughs> he was the amiibo king. Please, everyone, he bow has down. A, he has a headdress the made king. of amiibos. That was a. Did you guys catch that? That was he, really clever. What did you say? Yeah, the emperor had no clothes. <laughs> 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 Have you heard that tale? I'm not gonna tell it, but you. Yeah, that yeah, was yeah. that's that. The emperor's knew, drapes like, wow. do match his curtains. <laughs> that's my amiibo story no. for the day. Let, and let me just say, like during the, the, my year on the podcast, I've said a lot of stories, a lot of which I regret. But this is one I I just don't regret saying at all. Are we going to talk about podcast like, regrets now? Uh, well, I, my only one and only podcast regret that I know I just I uh, I don't know why I ever did this. I opened up with some stupid story about a squirrel. Jumping to a leap, a leap of faith. Oh, yeah, that was the first time I met you. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, that. Is, why did I mention that during a podcast? That was like, that was just, that's and not Zelda. I never let it go. <laughs> yeah, and then Adam's like, Chris, the Squirrel Story guy. And I'm like, thanks, Adam. Jeez. Um, but besides that, it's great. Being on this podcast is awesome. Be, just listening to our dynamics is great. Um, you guys are awesome. I met Jake through this, and Jake... I will say this: when I met Jake in person, because we met on this podcast, where we met in person, that was that was a little surreal in a way. I was like, "This is great," and Jake just looks at me like, "Chris, get out of my house." <laughs> yeah, it was interesting I, I, doing that live show together because it was it was weird just watching you talk because like <laughs> I have the you know the suspension of reality, which is you're somewhere else. Like I'm in my room, just you know talking in my mic, right. I can't look at you when I disagree with an opinion, <laughs> but I can look at you and drain the eyes when I when I really watching understand you guys, what you're saying. Like, yeah, Jake. Watching I agree. you guys record is super cute because like, you guys are cute. Thanks, bud. Like looking Thanks, at your Jake. faces. Thanks, Adam. You know, since we're so cute. since we're talking uh, about our, our early podcast days, I I guess now is as good a time as that. You know what? Let's let's do a few more. Uh, do we have any more fan topics before I get into that? Uh, no. This that's it for this week. Oh yeah. Okay. But if you have any of your own, okay. please send them to us because we could use more fan topics all the time. Forever. You know, that's just how it works. Um, I, I guess now's as good a time as any to, uh, to say a few things about the show. Um, when I, you know, Chris just mentioned how his first time here, he became the squirrel guy, like, with, like, zero to ten. It just happened. <laughs> yeah, uh, not to mention, I, I had to, I, I even went along the saying that, that like, oh, maybe I should say like why I'm I'm supposed to be on this podcast instead of just like acting natural. <laughs> like, I felt like that was a little. Uh, I didn't need to do that either. I could have just yeah. Said that whatever. actually that actually not, brings not me whatever, to my but. thing. Uh, on the the first episode I did, I also had something that followed me for a little bit. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay. Because like when I when I got on, it was the second episode, and I was I was pretty nervous about it. You know, it was it was Adam, I think Colin McIsaac and uh, Nate. 
and editor like all of, of you guys yeah yeah and all of you guys yeah. were like you know i'm adam i'm host i'm you know copy and editor nate you know everyone said their thing i i was just like i'm literally some guy <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I think that's but the that's, best description. You know, I wish no, I had thought was, of that. It was, I, you know, I, I look back on it, and it, it was a very, like, genuine, like, statement. But um, the thing is, is that I really was at the time. You know, I, if you listen to that first episode, if you ever, or the, technically the second, my first, uh, you'll hear a lot of nervousness when I talk. You'll hear a, few, a tremble here or there. You'll, you know, you'll hear me be very safe with my opinions uh, up until I talk about Destiny. Because I didn't like Destiny. <laughs> <laughs> the many times we talked about Destiny from you know, then on. <laughs> I, I've always sort of let myself... Well, hey, 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 Jake, did you hear that they're releasing a full game called Destiny yeah, like, next week? <laughs> it, it's all come full circle, actually. <laughs> yeah. Wait, are they uh, releasing okay. another game called Destiny? Uh, des- no, it's a Destiny. No, it's the Destiny, Taken the Taken ca- it's, it's Destiny with yeah, everything. Oh. So it's not just like Destiny, wait till I'm finished. Yeah, which I mean, at least, uh, whatever, they released all the DLC with it, that's cool. Uh, but anyways, uh, yeah. yeah, I was pretty safe with the opinions, I was a little, very nervous, and I, you know, over time, that sort of went away. Um, I am really thankful for this show, because it gave me something that I never had before. It gave me a, a place to, uh, I don't know, I guess get over my stage fright, and, you know, I got to... Self confidence. Yeah, it actually gave me a lot of confidence like, in you know my my opinions, my and, and you know my my ability to talk with people, and I got to you know like I didn't say a lot of popular things all the time. I, I remember like everyone lost their mind when Majora got a remake, and I was like, guys, no, this is not a good thing. Um, you know, like, and yet we we played it, we got through it, it was great. Um, still like the original more, and like, oh, God, I remember that too. Like we had, we pretty much discovered they were like oh let's talk about majora's max a week later oh majora's mask is coming out on 3ds yeah, we we've, we've predicted we've been through a lot of bumps uh and, yeah but feel yeah. free to keep going jake no and like i still remember like the first time uh you know i got a positive comment on the show it, it dude it stayed with, it still stays with me like i was an episode i wasn't on and i think it was like Bitman. people people think that it doesn't matter when they say things to us like comments don't matter you know like oh they never read the comments like we no read the comments and they really do matter and <laughs> no, no. i i hate some people because they don't really i don't know i, I get mad <laughs> and i do that thing like you know they say never read the comments but you know we do we we, we obsess you, you kind of have say. to i mean i guess once you get to a certain level well, I mean, you shouldn't but you know <clears throat> but like you know we're still a family you're still like a tight-knit group with us like you, there's there's like what, less than twenty thousand of you that listen to this every week you know it's it's not like you know it's hard to listen to the comments the people that do comment there's so few of you you know that it, why not? Why not explore and interact and I mean, know and see what's going on? The, the the few episodes we've had, like hundreds of comments, I'm like, wow, that's amazing. In comparison, I know that there's people that get like millions. I'm like, 100 comments to me is like, oh my god, 100 10 people comments. listen 10 to comments things 10 comments that, to me is ten, amazing. What, just, yeah. I think there was one letter that you got that some guy said, Chris, you're great. And I'm like, <gasps> we We get so awesome. much. We get and, so much. And all the countless... The, like the, the few tweets that we that you and Adam you and I get, oh no the I'm people like, that God, people that message us on Twitter it's so sweet it's so kind and they 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 just talk and about I love just tweeting back like yeah and they thanks. talk about how much just they love like, the, uh, they love you guys like I I've gotten several emails and I've showed Jake every single one that it comes in I saying that they love Jake or that they love Chris you know despite what everyone says about Chris <laughs> sorry Chris we're so mean to you all the time and people saying they love Caleb it's okay. all the time and. <laughs> You guys, you know, the ones, the, the few of you that, you know, feel like, you know, hey, maybe I should say something nice, you know, give something. It, it matters. It matters so much. It gets me through my week. No, I, like, I, I recognize I, names even, you know, like, I, I, I know. Yeah, Mel, we get excited. I know it's Colonel like, Majora. I know Bitman. I know Austin. Bitman. Mike, I know Jacob from Bittman. Texas. He's don't think I don't know one. you, man. I know you're Jacob out there. from Texas. Good guy. Adam from Missouri is one <laughs> I know, of our newer guys. <laughs> Adam from Missouri. I know Becca. Okay, I, I know. Like yeah. There's. There's one dude I, that follows me that I should know. He tweets. You no, know, it's There's just a... it's been more than words can describe. Um, you know, I, I even remember some of our deeper talks we had on, like that, that go beyond video. He's like, we have a bonus episode that we never uploaded. Adam may it's up. Oh, it's yeah. completely up to him. Um, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna upload it eventually. It's it's uh, up to you if you do or don't. But it's me, him, and Jeff. And you know, that was a very it was when we were waiting for Yacht Club Games, dude. Uh, Nick was. 
because uh, he was because uh, they're busy day. as they're no, they were busy and you know busy. so we he, like he genuinely you know just he forgot because they, <laughs> they were, were busy getting amiibo yeah, announcements. No, they were, I think it was that a man, time zone issue, and also he was really busy that day. But yeah, no. it was crazy. Yeah. So you know we had like when you when you eventually hear that it's a very like real candid talk between the three of us, and I like when we got to do that because we also because people one of the more negative comments I see frequently is when we stray from Zelda. And people are like, ooh, stick to Zelda. Like the time we talk about Skyrim and people. Or people really calling us it. fanboys for companies that aren't Nintendo and things yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, funny, like, but, you know. It's not like there's Zelda things to talk about 24 7. We played other games. Or honestly, <laughs> honestly, like, there are Zelda updates, but sometimes there's. That's that's all it is. It's like, it's an update. And it's nice to appreciate that. But sometimes I feel like as, as viewers, you deserve so much more than just a Zelda. Like, you deserve a genuine discussion. You deserve a genuine conversation things that matter to you as a gamer things that will matter to you in years to come you know if something big happens in gaming that isn't exactly fun to talk about like you know there was almost a shooting at the pokemon world Champ- like that matters that matters so Jeez. much more than that talking was... about how <laughs> two links playable uh, and Hyrule yeah, yeah i don't it's it's something we've known was going to happen it's something that we we could figure was going to happen know, you know it's it's not something I, that you know you as a as a fan will need to hear us talk about more than it happened. There are some things that we need to do, do discuss, which is, you know, how the, the, uh, the economy and, uh, uh, social order of video game as an industry and as, as a, as a, as a movement will, will change over the next couple of years, how it will change over the next couple of months, you know, what you can expect from companies, what we think, you know, companies should be doing or shouldn't be doing, how you think, how we think that you guys, you know, should save money because you know a lot of people are out there to try and get get into your wallet now. And we're trying to you know make sure that yeah, you guys aren't. Yeah, you guys making... see that Deus Ex nonsense with the uh, augment your pre order? <laughs> yeah, uh, don't buy Deus Ex. Don't, yeah. don't I, invest in that. I, Do not I, give them a dime. I I honestly think though that it, it even further like with the fact that you guys come to us like for this like however many of you because there's so many like you come to listen to us for all the stuff yeah. like we try to put on like the best show we possibly can like and because we know like. We oh god everyone's yeah, watching. Yeah, it's, like we don't. I'm sorry, Chris. No, no, no go ahead. No, it's go also, ahead. Go ahead. You know, podcasts are they're long. You know, they're they're just. It's. I'll be real with you guys. I don't typically listen to podcasts in my free time because it's just two hours of you know whatever, which probably doesn't sound good because I'm saying that I'm on a podcast, but I don't know. Like I I, t- I yeah. you know it's it's different on this end. We of spend it, more time creating content than we do absorbing it because we're busy creating it. Yeah. Yeah. And, Honestly, um, like that's that's the real thing. Is like I would love to spend more time. I used to listen to like a few podcasts before. Now I do this one, and I can't. I haven't listened to most no. of the stuff I used to listen to for like a year now. And the things that influence this show, things that I think you know, like the Rooster Teeth's podcast, heavily influenced my opinion of how these sort of things should go, how they should feel, how they should flow, the the amount of people that should be on it. And even since that first episode that me and Colin did a year ago, and we didn't know what we were doing. <laughs> Uh, and we tried our best to try and make something interesting and and funny and entertaining. Um, we've tried our best to make you guys I, I w- as fans feel like, you know, you're part of the conversation that you feel like you guys are getting something that's worth your time that we feel proud to put out there. And just, I will say, mm-hmm. Adam, I, I just want to say like, just cause I, so Adam is the, the host, the editor, the plans of everything pretty much. And he'll just come to us like, Hey guys, this is the plan for this week. We're like, okay. Um, it's it has been really fascinating, kind of watching you grow since day one to here. Because I don't think many people in the audience know, like the reason why I came on the show is Adam asked me as a favor because I had a good mic <laughs> in a way, and he knew good enough. People, yeah, he knew I had a good mic. No, 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 not just that, but like I knew, he knew I, know, I did some I knew Chris internet did content. content on the side. I knew he he's an avid gamer, and we we known each other for a couple of years now. Like, we, yeah, we Adam and I had, to we extent. went to yeah. high school with each other. Yeah. Um, so. So it and just seeing it all like you from way back when to like now it, is honestly it's and it's our trip. and our friendship kind of grew crazy. as a result I think you know it's yeah this, this is we we <laughs> oh the nice nights we've had at Denny's yeah. and like the just the crazy coffee the trips nice and, and I feel like you know, me and Jake as as really friends great. have grown me and Colin as friends have grown and Caleb especially you know we. Kale- oh, Kale- my I, I can't Caleb. say something on Caleb's behalf because I, as I as I've grown to know him, he's a, he's he's a, he's a bit of a complicated to read sort of person. But what of course, I can, that's Caleb. Yeah. What I can say about about him on this show is he, especially in response to that first fan topic, he really enjoyed 
you know, like being able to do this and talk and, you know, so, hearing that feedback. He loved you guys. I, I think Caleb's favorite thing was Caleb. voicing his opinion and everything. Like he did he such was, a great like I think job overall. Of of most people, Caleb is known for having very out there opinions about games. Mm-hmm. And the fact that you guys were so welcoming and warm to him. No, it was, he... it, was it was so sweet. And I, I I'm so happy because you know, it's good that he was recognized for, you know, having a, I guess I could say a good opinion about games. You know, every, almost, I, I'd say almost every opinion about games is good, except for the ones that aren't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, but, you know, like, yeah. the, just good the idea point. that, you know, like, it, it, it's nice to know that, you know, this is kind of a space where people can be honest and they can be open. They don't have to lie to you and, you know, pretend that they care. I mean. Adam, I take back everything I said. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and no. The honesty joke. is gone. <laughs> Yeah, or it's here. I I guess just getting (laughs) back to to talking about the show. I mean, there there are even some episodes where we talked about some pretty, you know, complicated, real human fear, you know, like feelings and emotions. Like, I remember it was a very early episode, like probably uh, it was right around the time majority of the suicide episode. It was the suicide episode where we talked about, you know, like. I don't think we should title it the suicide. Uh, episode, I, well, yeah. it's, we talked about suicide there, and you know, we we got kind of real with the audience, and we, we you know we talked about you know if you're feeling these kinds of things, you know, you're not alone, and I, I know like people you could people talk we to. Got a, we got a healthy number of responses comments. about you know. Yeah, we really did, I, I, and I it was, was it was. I felt really warm, you know, like I was just talking from. I f- I feel warm right now talking about my feelings. Oh, I'm I, I'm about I to. Don't get to feel warm this often. And it's kind of, it's really, you know, I'm about to actually talk about some real feelings right now. Are you guys ready? <laughs> Go for it. I, I Jim, never announced you, tell me you love me show, right now. And I, I won't get too deep into it because there's a level of appropriateness you have to keep. Uh, beginning of this year, uh, I was about January 4th. I found out my dad had cancer and it sucks. It's still an ongoing battle. When I found out, uh, my life started to, I handled it as about, about as well as you could probably handle that. And uh, I remember there was one week that uh, it was right as it happened. Adam didn't have me scheduled for the show. And, you know, I was being huffy and puffy and whatever. And, you know, he he took it upon himself to make it a five person episode uh, because, it, it, you know, that's not easy because it's hard. It's fun enough editing four people. He was like he did <laughs> five uh, because, like, I didn't want that to to bring me down. You know, it sucks when you have real problems happen. The world doesn't stop turning, but the thing is that you can't let it stop turning for you. You have to keep going. You you have to, you can't let things bring you down. You, you know, I, I know it sucks so much when, when something hits you like a ton of bricks and you're just supposed to keep going, but it's good to, to keep pressing yourself, you know? And I, I'm honestly appreciative that he gave me the chance to get on that week. And, you know, he's... If there's... If there's it's if there's it, one thing that I've ever learned in the the brief amount of time that I've been alive, it's that no matter what people say, no matter how talented other people may be, no matter how smart people may be, in comparison to you, and that's fine to accept that you know some people will be smarter, some people are more talented. I'm not the best audio editor. I'm not the best podcast host. Maybe I'm not even the best creative. Um, oh, you suck. But but uh, <laughs> the thing is, is that you know you never. You never give up, you know, the, if there's uh, this, uh, a stupid way to say it, but if there's ever a stat in D&D that I would say that, you know, I ever invested my points into the most, it's, you know, willpower. It's uh, it's constitution. The ability to keep going forward despite all the hardships that you face. The ability to keep marching on and, and never let the things that are heavy bear down on you because if you do, then they win and you have nothing to show for it. And I think that if you keep pushing, you know, and if you keep fighting for the next day, you'll have that next day. And that's something that no one can take from you. Yeah. If you keep fighting, then you've won. In a way, you've won. And I just hope that everyone does that. Because, you know, I've done some stupid things. I did an episode, episode 17 uh, or 16 was our like Hanukkah episode. And I said some stupid, I, I voiced my opinion in some stupid ways. I I made a, I've made a fool of myself. I've made a fool of myself in several ways. Our E3 episode, I made a fool of myself. Uh, I, I've made a fool of myself. I just want to say it. I, I as... insulted my friends. I've I've been bitter uh, behind the scenes. I've been crass and and harsh. Not to say that we haven't but, done the same to you. But it's still, you, you um, know, it's... it's... No, 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 it's fine. <laughs> We're growing and everyone's together. And that's it's just part of 
getting better, learning and, from and mistakes if, and things like that. If I had, you know, yeah, really and if I had out. stopped, if you know, if I was when I got the flu in episode sixteen and I stayed in bed like I should have, uh, I would have let the flu in. If I had given in and you know, uh, s- like slept that night when I got back from LA uh, after E three. I would have let that flight win. I would have let, you know, all the the exhaustion and stuff. And if I if I let, you know, uh work or finals weeks from school, you know, big projects, that sort of thing, if I let that get in the way and I said, Oh, this week I can't do the, the uh, podcast. If I went out uh with friends and I, I came back and it was four in the morning and I still had some editing to do and I went to and if I decided to to go to bed or something, I would have done you guys a disservice and I would have done myself a disservice because I would have given up. And that's something that I and I hope you guys never do. Never do it. Because once you do that, then everything that you've 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 gone for, you know, you, you There's there's two different kinds of people that you'll find online find online. There's there's the people that make content that's really amazing and they they do it for like a month or two or even a few months and then they just disappear. They they just gave gave up. It was too much work, and they they couldn't handle it. But they made some amazing stuff. And then you'll find people like uh, Markiplier, who's been doing his stuff for like five something years now. And at first he wasn't great. At first he was kind of terrible. But he's been doing it for for a long time, and he keeps pushing himself, and he keeps doing more, and he keeps working harder, and he keeps exploring his own ideas, and he kept you know pushing himself. But and he eventually you know became one of the biggest let's players on YouTube, and He's doing very well right now because he never gave up despite the fact that he never was big, despite the fact that, you know, he wasn't the best. He wasn't the most talented. He didn't have the most potential, but he kept pushing on and he 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 found himself and he never said, I can't. So if this year of podcasts are terrible opinions, my stupid opinions about 3D games has taught you anything, it's. Never, never give up. Never say no. Never say I can't. Because when you yeah. do, you really can't. When you yeah. say I can, you have a shot. There were a lot of times this year I, I'd wanted to give up on things. You know, like I, like I said earlier, finding out that news about my dad was a huge gut punch. And mm-hmm. because not four days before that, I, I made a New Year's resolution that every week I was going to go out and try to find something I've never done before and, and capture the moment. And then four days into it, I find out this and, you know, I wanted to give up immediately on myself and I'm almost done. I'm almost done with my resolution. And you just, you can't let, as Adam said earlier, I'm sure there are a lot of people who are listening right now who are going through something, but do you want that to be what defines you? One of my favorite lines from any, any show, any medium I've ever heard ever is actually from Parks and Rec. And, um, it's it's Chris Traeger, the best the best human being alive, and he he looks to he looks to Andy and he says, hmm. "How we handle tragedy defines who we are as people. You can't let this moment deflate you. You just can't. You you have to pick yourself up and dust yourself off and find out what your next step is." Mm-hmm. And yeah, that's really funny. You know, I look at this like really like interestingly. So. Like yourself, Jake. Look at I me also had a family member. Please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, like, like yourself. Um, so last year, my aunt was diagnosed with uh, breast cancer. Very sorry to hear that. Um, <laughs> no, uh, we'll get, get ready for the sex part. Um, so the week before we did the live episode, uh, she actually okay. passed away. Um, and so I was up in or- I was in Orlando for the purpose of uh, you know, her funeral. Well, it w- well, we didn't call it a funeral. We called it a celebration of life. Um. Yeah, and so two weeks before, prior to that, you know, a week before she passed and a week before her funeral, you know, uh, I actually had a conversation with her because I, I was up there again and seeing her. Um, and I, I remember telling her, like, oh, because she had always heard about the things I do online and, you know, like anything from cartoons to the podcast to, you know, the video game stuff. And I was, I wanted to tell her more because I, I got like a PA job for uh, an, a web series that I did for two months. Um, and I, I didn't get to tell her about, everything in detail but I, w- I was able to tell her some things i told her the next time i'm up i'll, I'll tell you all about it because I, I had to go um and you know i didn't get to tell her before she before she passed away and so i, I always knew that like you know everyone said like she was so interested she was so like 
you know, I, I guess I, I took it for granted in a way. And it kind of made me think like, well, now's the time where I have to, I have to kind of get into crunch time. I can't just like let go just because I wasn't able to, I wasn't able to, you know, keep up with her. And in that sense, like you got, I got to keep working harder just to make sure that like she knows that this, this is what, you know, I'm, I love doing this is, this is it. Like this is pretty much every, everything I do. It's just like, even though she's not here anymore and I, I won't be able to express it to her. I'm going to make it my goal to do everything I can to make sure that somehow, some way she knows exactly what I'm doing. She knows how I'm doing. She knows I'm spreading good messages and all this great stuff. And maybe one day uh, later on in my life, I'll be able to tell her this. Right. And, you know, it'll be cool. And Chris, cool she knows stuff. because you know. Exactly. Uh, so, so Colin, I wanna just... do you have, do you have feelings <laughs> at all? <laughs> F- yeah. Papa John's. <laughs> yes! I will say this, Colin. You know why I agree with you? It's because I actually have a job at a pizza place outside of the internet world. And uh, I will say, I will say I agree with that statement. Uh, it's not. I want to I wanna talk about one more thing before we wrap this episode up. Um, Is this Zelda? Oh, wait, uh, Zelda. No, it's, it's, okay. it's about the podcast again. It's uh, moving forward, oh, okay. what we're going to be doing. Uh, we're in talks right now. Nothing is set in stone yet, uh, but Jeff and I have been talking to our bosses about the idea of crowdfunding um, because this podcast costs money. <laughs> it Surprisingly, it costs money. Our equipment costs money. I don't pay Jake and Chris and Jeff and Colin and such because I don't have money. That's why if my I voice did, sounds would... like poop. If I did, I would. I, That's why my if I did, okay. I would give them stuff, and I would have stuff, and there would be stuff everywhere that made this all sound nice and pretty. Um, if you guys are interested in the idea of crowdfunding, let us know. We'd love to hear what you think. If you have any ideas of what we could do, maybe we could do live streams. Maybe we could do Skype calls. Maybe we could do you know little one-on-one chats, or maybe we could help you with your own projects. You know, let us know. We'd be happy to you know hear from you guys, or maybe you know I could work I- out some art deals with you guys. Uh. I love executive producing things because it's great, just, and I love helping people get uh, out there. We just we want to keep being able to do this for you, and I I elect to not have a job in order to do the things that I do online, and even then I still find it difficult sometimes. That's and I'm not asking, I'm not begging for money, but I'm just saying that if you guys think that <laughs> guys, it would be please. something you'd be interested in, let us know because it would be nice <laughs> to know that you guys uh, would be willing to donate money here and there. And you guys could get some cool it would stuff be out great of it. To know that, uh, but I'll yeah, send you uh, a snapshot of my butt. Please, please do not. That is harassment, <laughs> my friend. Um, <laughs> Only if they wanted it. I mean, I guess if they ask, if they all, if they all of it, if they, if they, the adults and they ask for, it's nice. You know, get a, get a picture of the tush, and you know, you put it on your wall and you frame it. It's nice, frame tush. Um, I, it's funny. <laughs> I actually kind of do want to say, like, this, this whole year of producing this show has inspired me to get back into one of the very first thing I ever did on the internet. I made a, I made a parody with a friend of mine, a friend that we actually had a guest. He was our first show. guest. Uh, yeah. Name, he was, was your yeah, first guest. His name was Mr. Screwitz, Mr. Paulson. He's one of my best friends in the whole world. Animator. He's a wonderful man. After a year of not working on this stupid pilot I made for a cartoon, I, buckled up this last week and I got back into production you could say with it and I've been working on it really hard this entire week so and that's just because I feel like wow I'm doing the podcast and I feel motivated to do something else like it's been one year like let's see what else I can make for this next year for 2016 like it's good so yeah so now I will be going back to the cartoon that's business. excellent man that's very nice. happy with it Colin yeah. thanks yes and I also play video uh, games. I also play video games on the channel. Me, Cake Productions. Go subscribe. Yeah, you've been working hard on that. Um, <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, it. but hopefully, hopefully, we'll see more stuff from you guys in the future. Colin, I want to see your stuff soon. I know yeah, I know. The problem is, um, I want to see your butt, Colin. Thanks. No, you don't. But are, are you sure? <laughs> I'm very sure. I don't um, think you are. I, I mean, the problem problem with making web content or at least with me, is that I, I want to do something that, like, people haven't done. But, like, yeah, we've talked not, about this. I'm not trying to be like, I'm going to make a new inventive series that no one's ever done before. It's going to be really artful. Imagine imagine the nostalgia critic combined with the younger video game nerd. Yeah, no, It'll no, be the best I'm thing not... the internet has ever seen. Um, 
That just sounds like the same yeah, exactly. thing. Yeah. <laughs> Although I think Nostalgia Critic's way better than ABGN. Used to be. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I will say, I do enjoy anyway, the James and Mike Anyway, let's Monday talk about Colin's then. thing. Pretty great. Colin, Sorry. tell us your thing. Um, I'm going to be trying to start a series soon. I just need uh, a good tripod and just some extra time to work on it. Because it's going to be kind of lengthy. But otherwise, Ooh. I'm Colin's going to get lengthy. <laughs> Um, <laughs> also, this is something that I've been thinking about just doing on the side. Uh, personally, I, I mean, I can't really get the other guys to do this because they, they have things that they do in their life, but, uh, I was thinking that I would maybe start streaming, maybe? I don't know. I, I'm hesitant because I don't want to be that guy, but I mean, if it's something that you guys would be interested in seeing, uh, some other content from me on the side, please let me know. Streaming, uh, I used to stream, you know, I, and I, I do this I, to entertain you. I don't do it for, you know, I mean, I, it is a joy to entertain you, but I do it in a way. <laughs> I do it so that you guys have something that you guys want to see. I don't want it to be something that, you know, you feel like is just taking up time that I could be using to make something better for you guys. <laughs> I'm going to use this time to watch JonTron videos instead. It's okay. You run out soon, and then you only have like seven months to wait in between each one. So you good. You don't have to. Oh, you'll catch up. Spend too much. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll like don't it. do that. I've always wanted Come to go on. back to Game Grumps, but I will never be able to catch up. You want to know where I left off? Shadow of the Colossus. Oh my god. I will oh, never Jesus. be able to catch up. And so I will I have, send you a. <laughs> I could send no you a playlist. To, good stuff. Uh, man. Unless like they nuked Los Angeles or like the internet stopped working, then like they, they. By the way, actually, if it's one thing working, I want to throw out there that I do appreciate. You guys are in a hug box. Like, you know, we said that, like, we appreciate all the kind things you say, but we also appreciate you guys being critical and voicing your concerns. Yeah, yeah man, be that's mean great. Me. I, I appreciate when you guys say, hey, Chris, you suck. And I'm like, hey, hey, man, get, get on, get, come I mean, here. it's come nice, on the it's nice to, to hear when you guys say, like, this is disappointing or, like, I would like you guys to do this more and, we, and we're not doing something right. I like when don't, people don't. are like, how dare you say the PS3 is a failure? I'm not a Sony fanboy, but I, I, I am loyal to Sony and I will sync with them. All the time. Even though they also said that it was kind of a bad idea. <laughs> I, I like when they say, uh, wow, who's this Chris guy? He yeah. sucks. And I'm like, yeah, I know. Well, hopefully they'll hear more of this Chris guy in the future. Uh, I want to thank you guys so much for joining me for this past year. For all the, the good times, the bad times. Uh, and Jake, I wish you and Caleb the best in your future endeavors. I wish you the best today, tomorrow, forever. Uh, Chris... Uh, I hope that we can continue to work together. I, I mean, I'm always future, here. <laughs> I hope that, you know, stuff that we're working on on the side can come to light soon. Colin, yeah. you're a delight. You're, Ooh, you're one of, you, you guys better. are some of my favorite people, uh, some of my best friends. And I'm so happy that, you know, I was able to share this experience with you guys. Uh, and I was just so happy that I was able to share it with you guys as fans. I'm, I'm, for those of you that have stuck with us for a year. Uh, you're amazing. For those of you that are joining us uh, just now, if you've joined us recently, you have a year's worth of podcasts to listen to. Please don't go back up. and listen to them. most of them are garbage, um, well, <laughs> except yeah. for the ones that oh, you get. Except most, the ones I want them to listen to. The ones, just <laughs> no, there, there was once the ones where we predicted things like two months before. Well, those they are happened, amazing, and like they end up. Those are amazing. I'm like, oh my god, I can't believe we didn't. See anyway, this coming. Uh, thank you so much, and uh, I hope you, Jake. I love yeah. you. I, I, I have one one closing uh, thought. It's Anywho, possible. well, before you, you Colin, say that, Colin, go ahead. Say your say your. I, I just I just wanted to say that this weekend, even though when is this podcast going up? Saturday, like, I think. Saturday. Saturday. It's going to be too late, but I will be at Mag Classic the entire weekend. So, so if, if you're you somehow listening, plan this, yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you if you somehow are listening to this Saturday and you're not just somehow yeah. shit faced in the middle of the Hilton in Virginia, um. Come find me, and we can talk about, I don't know, Codename Steam or something. He can tell you all of my dirty secrets. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. Uh, n- now, Jake the Amiibo King must be... I have one last thing I want to say. Just just one last thing? That's all? That's all? I just want to thank Adam and also the people <laughs> listening. I'm uh, going to cry. I swear. Because, like like I said <laughs> earlier, uh, the, and this is all linking up to this, all the little things I've told you. Uh, I used to be pretty shy about digital content, and now I'm halfway through my first video. Because I have a lot more confidence in myself and the way I talk and, you know, the way people react to me. And that's something I wouldn't have without this show, you know? Um, I got the chance to talk to some amazing people. I got to 
you know, talk music with, with Smooth McGroove. And I got to debate uh, MatPat from Game Theory on the Link is Dead Theory. And I never in a million years thought I would get to do that. You know, like, that's that's amazing. And I, I never would have done that if it weren't for Adam and his just endless devotion to, to you know, striving <laughs> to be better and, and reach higher. And uh, this show, the people who watch it, the people who are part of it, have helped me so much in not only where I probably want to go, but also just just my day to day. You know, I, I said it hasn't been an easy year, but, you know, this show was something that I got to do and I got to be passionate and just, you know, be lively about something, lively with opinions, even negative ones. And I cannot thank any of you enough for, for what you've allowed me to do here. And I will remember it for as long as I live. And um, if you want to, I don't know, follow me on Twitter. I said it earlier. I, who knows? I might post something there. I don't know. But in closing, I just want to say thank you. It has been as amazing an experience as it gets. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Ha- hashtag hail Amiibo King 2015 <laughs> and forever. So with that, we close this week with the Hero Time Remix by Jish. Thank you guys for joining me and keep on adventuring highly. Well, I'm very offended, actually. I take extreme umbrage to that. Fuck yeah. you. <laughs> Watch out! Hey guy. If if you were a snake, which one would you be? Would you be punished, naked. Jake? You'd be naked, be Jake. Naked. <laughs> naked, Jake. Yeah. Chris. Naked, solid. Can Jake. I be? Can I be? Um, naked ghost. Yes, naked you can. Side, quiet. Naked, quiet. <laughs> that works. You know, that's actually her her default uniform. It's called naked. Sweet. Naked. It's, it's called naked quiet. <sighs> Just uh, because like you could choose her. Whatever. Fuck. Uh, important stuff. What's next? See, I would have been like the kind of guy that'd be like a really excited when I saw like naked outfit unlocked for Snake and like yes. Adam, and then that's super just disappointed. You're gay. That's just because you're yeah. f- no, it's just because I appreciate it. You appreciate it. I want to see big boss's big booty or his big dick. Yeah, he's got a D dick. I, I, I saw a post on. Uh, if you have you guys uh, heard of the page implying video games are fun? Yeah, it's pretty great. 
they posted a thing and they were like, what the video game industry thinks we want. And it was like a screenshot of Dead or Alive. And it said what uh, what we actually want. And it was like a close-up of Snake's butt from Brawl. Yeah. <laughs> wow. His, his butt was pretty fantastic in that game. It is. It's so toned. It, so it blows Zero Suit out the water. Like, it, it, it just... It's funny because like everyone's like, oh, Zero Suit Samus is like naked. She's wearing her naked outfit. And it's like... Who cares? Shulk is almost naked. Isn't that great, guys? Yeah. That's the only way I play a Shulk. That's the only way you can play oh, a Shulk. Oh, yeah, no. I will not play you if you're playing Shulk unless you're naked. <laughs> this is a serious draft for me, and Majora's Mask is still the best game ever. I will defend it. I'm still recording. <laughs> Majora's Mask, let me tell you about how subversive it is and how it's the best game ever. Let me tell you about why the remakes are just the worst thing ever. And also, the doo doo ba doo ba doo ba doo It's a good game. You should go play it if you haven't played it. Alright. Ending recording now. It's been... it's been something. <laughs>